Kia ora guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode number two of the transformation from phase one to phase two of the beta truck. You may remember in phase one we picked up the truck, rescued it from a paddock and uh, managed to get it back on the road through or onto fitness and in the last episode we started work on transforming it from a road going vehicle to something that's a little bit more capable off-road. So today we're continuing that. In the last episode, which if you missed I will leave a link up there for you, um, we tackled changing the front end over, um, putting a little bit of lift in it, clearancing everything, fitting 33s, diff guard and a couple of other wee mods. However, unfortunately the springs we slapped in, which were meant to give us about an inch to inch and a half lift, only gave us about 10mm lift once the springs settled. So I ended up yesterday going out and grabbing some uh, 2 inch lift springs, which we're just going to slap in. It's a little more lift than I wanted, however it's going to mean we're able to run a little bit more up travel, so I'm not too mad about it. So seeing as you guys saw it in the last episode, I won't bother filming too much. So I'm going to jump in and uh, rip the uh, front suspension apart, and um, I'll catch you when I've got the old springs out and the new ones ready to go in. Well, fast forward like 10 to 15 minutes and the springs are out. Man, it's easy on a disco too. Absolutely love it. Anyway, springs are out as you can see. Um, these are the old springs um, on the left. Um, and those are disco 1 springs. They're about 10 mil longer than the disco 2 ones I pulled out. And those are the uh, 2 inch disco 2 lift springs. Um, they're made by EFS Suspension. And as you can see, they're not a whole lot taller. Probably, I don't know... 20mm taller than the Disco 1 springs at the most, however they're a thicker gauge so uprated a little bit which will be perfect because we're putting a winch on. I was hoping to only lift the truck about an inch and a half but even if it is a full 2 inches I'm not complaining, it just means more up travel. Anyway, let's get these uh, new springs under and um, the truck back on the ground. So that's the springs in, now we've just got to chuck the cross member in which we didn't throw back in in the last video because I thought the springs may be coming back out. So that cross member just goes in there. Um, we just pulled that out so that we could get more droop out of the drive shaft. But yeah, we'll whack that back in and um, wheels back on, job done. There we go, that's much better. Much better ride height. That looks to be more like, yeah. Three and a half or four inches of up travel. I'm happy with that. We'll get a tape measure under and have a look. Well, there we have it, guys. That's looking way better. Quick measure up, and it's got about 85 to 90 millimeters of travel before it hits the bump stop. So, smack on that three and a half inch range that I was looking for. Um, the bump stop then compresses quite a bit, um, they're quite conical. Uh, rubber bump stops rather than a hard block so you do actually have some uh, so you do actually have some sort of squish before they completely top out anyway that's looking really good looks a lot better sitting nice and high as well well not nice and high i don't like high trucks but a reasonable height it definitely was a little bit too much of a low rider before yeah as you can see that looks awesome righto Passenger front 617 to 665, so we've gone up, uh, what's that, 48 millimeters. So, try and get a 2 inch lift in the back. Um, I will see what sort of springs and spaces we've got lying around, and we'll do our best to replicate that. But, um, yeah, first things first, we'll roll the truck forwards and basically repeat the process that we did in the last video, except at the back of taking the springs out, cycling the suspension with the new tyres, checking for clearances, adding bump stop extension if need be, which because the back axle doesn't obviously have any steering, I'm very hopeful that we won't have to extend the bump stops um, and that we'll be able to keep you know the full range of up travel um, without having to limit it at all. But we'll um, get chopping, clearance everything, and then we'll worry about uh, getting the ride height correct once that's all done. So roll the truck forwards and crack into it. So obviously we need to drop the axle fully down, so we need to remove everything that is going to limit the tra down travel. Obviously the shock absorbers are what does that, however 
as soon as we let the shock absorbers go, the very next thing that stops us is going to be our ABS lines and our um, brake lines. So what I've done is on the rear, you just have to pull the brake caliper off, it's two bolts, and then hang it up. Um, as you can see, I've done there. And then um, I've also gone ahead and uh, disconnected the ABS line. Um, so now it's just the rear shocks to drop out and we can drop this rear axle down pretty much as far as we need to so that we can get those back springs out and start cycling the suspension. So we've got the springs out, the axles dropped all the way down, it actually didn't go much further so if you're doing this yourself I wouldn't bother about releasing the brake lines and the ABS cables um, because the bushes and the um, Watts linkage and a couple of the other bushes like the sway bars, the end links, they don't allow for much more droop so if you're going to do it you'd have to remove that all anyway to get much more advantage over removing it but yeah just drop those um, shocks off and you'll get enough down travel to pop the springs out. Anyway, as you can see, springs are out, which means it's time for the fun stuff. We're gonna whack the tires on there, um, and then run it up to full uh, full bump, full travel, um, get it all flexed up and see where it rubs, and um, then we get to start chopping. So one, th one other thing to bear in mind is I did undo one of the radius arm bolts. Anytime you're trying to you cycle the suspension with a radius arm set up, you wanna remove one side bolt so that you can actually get better flex, because the radius arm actually acts as a sway bar so it's going to be fighting you the whole time unless you remove one of those bolts so obviously put it back in when you're done though anyway i'm going to chuck some wheels on and uh, see where we've got a trim well i've jacked up the rear axle as far up as i can get it and as you can see we've got some uh, clearance issues so it's not at full bump yet, it's not on the bump stops and we are tucked in there, so before we're able to get too much further obviously we are going to have to start chopping. Yeah, there's some serious rubbing issues, so my game plan is to trim it back to this lip here, carry that lip down. Um, yeah, hopefully that'll get the tyres clearing. Obviously I'm trying to do my best not to have to extend the bump stops because the more travel you've got the better. Well it's, been a little, well it's been a while since that last clip was filmed, in fact about a month ago. Anyway, I went ahead and did the guard chop on one side without filming it just so that I could work out what I actually wanted to do because uh, it's really a matter of uh, trial and error. So now that I've worked out the game plan on one side, um, we'll do it on the other side but I'll quickly show you what I've done. So uh, as you can see. We have trimmed it right back here. The door skin on a Disco 2 is steel, um, and the rear quarter is alloy. Don't get confused, um, Disco 1 owners. Both skins are alloy on a Disco 1, and you cannot weld your door. Um, so what I've done is trimmed it way, way back, um, and then done a wee rivet here. I did a wee fold up. Um, folded the inner guard up to make a 90 degree. Riveted it so that the uh, Skin's not flopping around too much. I'll open up inside, as you can see, there's a lot of work went in there as well. Um, but I'll show you exactly what went on when we do the chop today. And then on the door side of things, as you can see, I've got a few relief cuts. Not the prettiest, but uh, that'll all get sealed up. But um, essentially, cut it and then pulled the inner skin up and um, have welded it together. Don't mind my wee whoopsie there. That was. Uh, a uh, rogue angle grinder um anyway that's what we're going to recreate and i'm going to show you the steps on how i did it this is not the perfect way to do it or not the exact correct way of doing it but it's a lot better than just uh, filling the inside with the i know like expanding foam or silicon sealant like i see a lot of people do um that is a lot better yes we'll still seal it up um but at least you've got some material in there holding the two skins um together so what I'm going to do, move the truck over in the shed so I've got space to work, jack the back up, take the tyres off and uh, crack into uh, doing the initial chop.
So I've transferred across all my measurements from the first door to the second door to keep it somewhat symmetrical. Just freehanded the arch because you uh, can't go too far wrong. Um, as you can see, I did trim a lot higher than uh, this this lip here. If I can give advice to you guys, don't go above that gut, that lip there unless you really have to. Um, from there, that increases the amount of work you have to do significantly because there's actually two layers of steel here, one there and then underneath. Um, they're crimped together here, but once you cut up here and down there, you then need to pull them together again, clamp them, and then spot weld them to hold them in place. So uh, that increases the amount of work a lot, um, and it also makes getting the inner guard folded up to meet the outer guard a lot harder. Yeah, take your time, make sure you're not cutting anything you don't want to, and uh, yeah, you should end up with a pretty okay result. As you can see behind me, the chop has well and truly begun. Um, and this is what I was saying about there being two layers of material. As you can see, it's crimped if you cut like right on the seam along here, but if you get too high up, it uh, expands out. So we've actually got to cut up to here to match the other side, up there and then to that mark there. Another thing I'd like to point out is that if you're doing something like this, especially around doors, any tricky areas, just leave them be. And then once you've taken the bulk of the material out, you can actually see how the door you can see how the door jam is constructed, and that way you, it gives you a better understanding of what you're trying to do rather than just tearing in and chopping out something you might want to keep. Also worth noting, when you're cutting, only cut the outer skin. Don't cut the inner skin straight away. Leave that material. You may want it. Um, good tip tip with aluminium is um, when you're cutting it, there's no sparks. So if you're cutting through aluminium and then you suddenly get some sparks means you've probably cut through into some steel. I feel like an idiot. It's a new day now, and especially after telling you guys to double check before you cut things, I went and messed up, guys. Um, so I was meant to leave uh, some material out here so I could fold up a flange that we could then rib it. Um, so what did I go and do? Just sailed right through and chopped it all off, not thinking, and uh, left me in a little bit of a sticky situation. So. I've come up with a new game plan. I'm going to cut a couple of wee L brackets, um, which I can put inside here that will go um, like that. Um, bit hard to explain, but you'll see it once I get going. But before I do that, I need to cut the remaining excess off, clean it all up, make it look presentable, and then I'll cut some brackets and um, rivet them in. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way. I don't know how I managed to do the first side so well, seeing as I hadn't done it before and make such a mess of the second side. But in the end, um, I decided to just chop it all out and just leave it open on the side because, yeah, the more I tried to fix it, the worse it was getting. So I just took the grinder to it and um, cleaned it all out. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of a gap around there, but that really doesn't matter because it's it's not like it takes you anywhere. But um, that's all um, all cleaned out now. So. What we'll do is we'll pinch this up, drill a hole here, and weld it up there. And then that will pull that up. We'll be able to weld up there as well. So it'll look it'll look nice and sealed. Um, but yeah, it'll just uh, just be open up under here. Um, and then I'll make a wee bracket off here, tie the guard in there so it doesn't flop about. Um, and that should be that side done. I'll show you like the other side. I honestly just don't know what went wrong on this side, but um, the other side like. It's all, well it's rusty now, but it's all nice and um, flush, whereas the other side it was dropping down and then pinched up and it's done all sorts of weird stuff. Oh, really? Double really? Ugh.
Winning. Winning. So we're just slowly working away, myself and Ilsa on the truck. Haven't really filmed a lot, sorry. Um, as you can see, I've got some boogie welds going on there to hold it all together. So, a couple spot welds and boogie weld on this wee tab so that it needs trimming back. Um, but we decided to start doing some weight reduction on the truck as well. So, as you can see, we've got the back row and middle row of seats out. And the... Uh, Toe ball is off and we're now taking the rear bumper off so we can do a quarter chop and uh, make a custom rear bumper. Um, <coughs> excuse me, me and Elsa, we've both got COVID right now so just chipping away really slowly. <coughs> oh dear. How are you feeling? Um, okay. 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10. Well, it's another day working on the beta truck and hopefully it is the last one in terms of chopping stuff up. Um, myself and Ilsa have been sick with COVID and yeah, just the truck sat, but whilst um, we're sick, we did get a little bit done. Um, so if we come in here, you can see, oh, helps. there's no seats in there. It's all stripped out, back bumpers out and tow bar is off. So that is getting all... So that has got us prepared for um, when we decide to throw some bar work on it, which will hopefully be not too distant future. Um, but yeah, last thing we've got to do today is get the door chop done. As you can see, this is mostly done, not super well. Just made a bunch of mistakes with it and a bit frustrating because um, I did the other side really well as the first one. To work out what I wanted to do then show you guys and then the second one I've just seemed to manage to mess everything up so not a whole lot of footage from all that um, I really don't know how this video is going to come out but I'll just put together what I've got and um, yeah hopefully it's of some interest and hopefully I managed to not make a huge mess of doing the door chop itself um, and you guys can learn something from um, how I tackle the door chop so uh, I reckon with that we'll uh, pull the wheel off and get into it So what we're going to do first is cut the outer skin off. Now, I know what I'm doing from the other side as to where I want to cut and whatnot. But again, just I want to reiterate, just take your time. Only cut a layer at a time. Um, so yeah, just poke the grinder disc through the layer you're doing and no more. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work my way um, around the outside there. Um, I'll cut up here because as you can see, it's folded together here. So I'll notch that section out um, and notch that out completely through all the layers and then just work my way down and cut that skin off. So we'll do that and then see how we're looking and then fold the inner skin up to meet the uh, outer skin. <laughs> So the next step is we need to remove that extra brace in there. As you can see, there's three spot welds holding it on. And um, with the, the, that layer of material as well, it makes it too hard to fold it up. I'm going to cut above the spot welds and then drill out the spot welds themselves. And I should be able to free that piece up. <laughs>
Right, well, we uh, already do weld now, so um, I'll crack out the welder and um, yeah, start welding the tabs up. So as you can see, I've cleaned up the edge so that we've got raw material to weld to and then just push it up, weld it, push it up, weld it, and um, so on. So, hate this job, I suck at welding um, panel steel, like really suck at welding panel steel. So, I'm just trying to get it held together and then I'm going to use a really strong sealant to um, fill in the gaps because obviously I mean this isn't the final product but it will make for a lot of gaps. So continuing on from the last clip, we're now a couple weekends down the track, last weekend got away camping, but a uh, huge huge thanks to dad, he did me a big favour and um, went ahead and cleaned up the cuts we made, so as you can see it's all been nicely smoothed out along the door, um, and did the other side even nicer, so I'm super stoked with how it's come up, and it, he found some paint, got it all matched up, it got paint matched as well, so definitely not perfect in terms of the jobs that I did um, but he's done a very good job saving it as you can see if we open the door jam up it all looks pretty original um, in terms of the fact that we were cutting and welding in here so it's all body filled um, and tidied up so way nicer than the beta truck actually needed but it's a good learning experience if I was doing it again I would not do the uh, cut and fold the tabs up on the door like I did I would actually just cut the whole lot out and then uh, make a paper template for a new um, new piece of material to go in um, and then you yeah, just get a piece of flat panel steel and fill it in so if you're doing it consider that um, what I've done's worked but uh, as you can see definitely not perfect a little bit lumpy um, but uh, the, it's the exact reason I wanted to do it on this was so that I'd know for future vehicles where I am going to care a little bit more. Anyway, today is just a matter of getting some springs back under the truck and reassembling everything. We will just cycle it up to full bump to make sure that the huge guard shop does clear the tyres, but I mean, I'd be very surprised if it doesn't. Um, unfortunately, I did have some springs lined up, um, but yeah, some person on Facebook messed me around, so don't actually have uh, lift springs to put in so we will be staying with some spaces we'll just cobble some spaces together to get about a two inch lift in and uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll take it from there so first things first we'll take the blocks of wood out from under the bump stops cycle the suspension make sure the tire is clear and then uh, start reassembling down jump down jump if you can all right Okay, that'll do. Well, there we have it, guys. Clearance. So, that's as about as close as we're going to be able to get it to full flex with this setup. It will flex further with the whole weight of a truck pushing down on it. Um, but yeah, I'm more than happy with that. Uh, that is plenty of clearance. And um, I can just take a mental note for going up to 35s because the guards are cut for 35s. Um, you go up from a 33 to a 35 you got one inch in radius so i'll just need to add about an, a one inch spacer on the bump stops and um yeah we'll be able to run 35s as well for the future so that's really good to bear in mind anyway that is a big one um the next step is to drop it all back down start throwing it all back together um and as i said we'll play with spaces to get the ride height we're after but um i'm imagining we'll probably go for about 40 40 mil of spacing um and yeah that should have us sitting uh Something about right. Here. Mm -hmm. And then a five mil plate here. Yep. And then I'm just gonna put this one on top. So we can put in the really big spacer, the 30 mil spacer. I decided to really go all out on this and buy some new spring isolators. Um, so these just sit on the top of the rear springs and 
stop them from making obnoxious noises, but also provides you with smidge more lift. Because um, the last springs I threw in, I didn't bother because um, we're doing a coil conversion which wasn't going to be staying in long, but that will make the truck ride a lot quieter. Just like that. Right, so we'll grab these as well, and it's going to be a case of these are poly spaces are always an absolute pain to try and get to seat. You often just have to sit them on and then um, the weight of the truck actually pops them on because they kind of need to deform a little bit to pop over the spring seat. So we'll just sit it like that. I'm guessing we're going to need to probably... Yeah, we're definitely going to need to use some spring compressors. Oh well, better grab those out and whack them in. To get some more droop, we decided to disconnect the uh, anti-roll bar end links. And uh, after doing that, I decided that, well, I mean, we're not going to be keeping, we've already deleted the ace. All this is uh, just, you know, sitting there not doing anything. Um, and seeing as it's pretty much an off-road only truck, um, we're going to delete the anti-roll bars. Not something I usually recommend doing, even with off-roaders, having on anti-roll bars is really nice to have a little bit of, um, little bit of um, stability. Uh, helps on sidelings and things like that. However, um, radius arms sort of have that same anti-roll attribute to them already. Um, I'll explain later on in a, well, probably in a further video. But because um, we've got radius arms in the rear, I don't feel too concerned about taking um, this all out. I mean, it's not working anyway, so we might as well take it out and lose some weight while we're at it. Anyway, I'm just undoing these fittings. It's probably going to make a monumental mess. And uh, yeah, we'll pull it all out and then continue on, get a bit more droop to uh, get it easy to put the springs under. But it's crazy how these sort of things just snowball. Are you kidding? Ah, oh, there we are. So yeah, now that the hoses are free, um, we'll take the ram out and the arms off and the ace will be deleted from the back for good. Ooh. <laughs> Gracious me, what has happened to you? Large mess. But we got the got the whole ace line out all well ace lines out all in one. So that's a win. No cutting required. And lucky. The garage floor is good as new. Right, well, I can't actually remember what we last filmed, but uh, ended up pulling the shocks right out um, as well. But we managed to get the spring in. Oh, that lighting is garbage. Anyway. <laughs> We got the spring in, so we're going to now do the other side. Um, it is quite a mission, but we'll crack into it. Springs are in. It was quite the battle. Would not recommend doing that. Um, I mean, it's got to be done. Next time, I think I'd just undo the watts linkage because that was what was stopping us dropping the axle further and that would make it so much easier. But anyway, it's all good. Um, and then I walked away for five minutes <laughs> and Ilsa has decided to uh, remove all the gunge off the bottom of the truck. She's done a great job. Must say, she has been so helpful. So appreciate it. Anyway. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to jack the axle back up now so we can bolt the shocks back in and then it's brake calipers and yeah, that's literally it I think. Alright. Righto, well the um, axle stands are out so ready to drop it down on the ground and see what sort of ride height we're sitting at. Finally time to see it sitting under its own weight for the first time in uh, way too long, so fingers crossed. The springs will need to still settle some from what you see um, immediately, but it should give us a fairly good idea of what we're looking at. So we'll drop it down and take a, take a nosy. Guys, 
quite a big gut, um, gap. However, once we've got some weight in the back, um, I'm sure that will level out. Oh dear, that needs to focus, yeah. So once we've got some weight in the back, that'll level out a little bit more. Um, there's things gonna be happening like batteries being moved back, um, a toolbox being put in the back, um, and a bigger spare tire adding. Obviously we've not got a bumper or toe points either, so a steel bumper will weigh it down a little bit more. And um, that should sit really level then, so I'm really happy. Um, I didn't go with the full 50 mil of uh, lift that I was originally thinking I'd do. So we've gone 50 mil of lift in the front, 40 in the back, and I'm sure that should have us sitting pretty level um, by the time everything is all uh, all squared away. So with that, I reckon we'll start packing up and get the truck out on the road um, for you to have a look at. As you guys can see, I decided to take the truck out of the shed and down the road to uh, get a few shots of it. Um, I absolutely love the guard chop, it looks pretty wild with the uh, slightly excessive chop, but um, hey, leaves room for 35. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you also learned something, I know I sure did. Um, I'm very pleased with the overall outcome, however I definitely do a few things a little bit differently, but uh, that chop of the door, I mean, it's definitely a lot better than just uh, the method that a lot of people do of just filling it with, um, you know, silicon or expanding foam. So overall, very happy with the outcome. And yeah, while it wasn't my favorite job, the exciting thing is, is that it now means that we're onto the fun jobs with this build. So stay tuned for all that. We've got fabrication and wheeling coming up with it. So uh, yeah, really excited as we uh, work towards getting this truck ready for um, an enduro race in I think it's like six or eight weeks time now so as I said hit subscribe for all that give us a like if you've enjoyed today's video and uh, leave a comment down below of what you thought of it and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching we'll catch you all in the next one cheers guys see you then other thing to note guys is lefty loosey righty tighty <laughs>